hello guys uh, today we are going to go in for yet another topic in advanced process and control and uh, that is taming inverse response for this we need to know what is inverse response how it happens and why it needs to be tamed so we go by a very simple example where we have a student and that student is very carefully observing the behavior of mercury in glass thermometer. I'm repeating, he, this student is very carefully observing the behavior. A casual student is likely to miss this point, but a very mindful student will see how this thermometer behaves. This mercury in glass thermometer as you can see over here is the one which we were earlier exposed to even before this covid thing now things are becoming digital what we have over here is we have a glass shell containing mercury and whenever this mercury in glass thermometer is put in any hot or hotter environment this mercury is expected to rise up and up and up and come to a point which is finally going to give us the temperature where this portion the lower end of mercury in glass thermometer is dipped so when this kind of mercury in glass thermometer which was kept at the room temperature when this was dipped in a hot cup of coffee the student observed that the mercury instead of rising it first it fell down the mercury fell down instead of rising and after some time it started rising above so this was a very peculiar case the student was perplexed and started thinking why it happened well it happened we know the reason that when this kind of thermometer is dipped in hot cup of coffee this portion it is having a glass shell so first before the mercury expands before the mercury warms up and expands the first contact is with the glass shell so it's the glass shell which expands it's the glass shell which expands and we see that on account of that since the container has expanded and the content has not yet the level of this mercury will fall down a little and finally this mercury will go on rising and it will ultimately reach the point where it is supposed to be so here we see that the response is initially in the opposite direction it is initially in the opposite direction where eventually it ends up so this kind of response where along the final response along the expected response if we have initial opposite response which is a kind of dip this kind of response is known as inverse response and sometimes we also call it as non minimum phase response so this is another name for inverse response now what is the issue this kind of response is observed in number of processing units in chemical plants we will discuss in a separate video one such process which is called shrinking and swelling of boilers we will go to the details in that video session not today not in this video and we see that this initial inverse response it is going to going to confuse the controller this controller it may be a human controller it may be an automatic controller like for example the temperature was expected to rise and it started falling down so on account of this 
the controller may take the action in the direction opposite to where it has to finally take the direction it has to finally take the whole process too so it's going to confuse it's going to confuse any kind of controller and that's why this needs to be tamed otherwise because of the initial reaction of the controller the things are likely to become even more uh, you can say wild or severe because we are taking the action in the direction opposite to where we should have taken this happened because of inverse response and therefore we need to tame we need to control this kind of inverse response so that our controllers whether they are pid controllers or they are any kind of advanced controllers they can be trained they can be employed effectively and they don't get confused on account of this inverse response friends as you can see that this inverse response it happened because of two things number 1 we have in a process which was expected to move in a linear direction the temperature was supposed to rise linearly but then along with it we have another process which is an opposing process you can see a negative sign over here this negative sign means it's an opposing process and this process is a short term process it will you know quickly settle down but ultimately because of this element present over here we will have a response which will not be a straight line but you will have you can see that the first process this k1 upon tau1 s plus 1 this is going to give us a response like this this is the dip in temperature on account of expansion of the glass in which the mercury is contained and the process number 2 it is k2 upon s it is the rise the linear rise of temperature and because of this composite action which is in the opposite direction the one and two are opposing each other we will have a final action and this final action is the overall response this response is taken as inverse response friends you can see over here that this k2 upon s was the actual response which was expected and k1 upon tau1 s plus 1 was on account of the expansion which we had not taken into account we normally tend to ignore this but if this term becomes prominent then the overall you can see the overall response the overall transfer function of this entire process looks like this specifically in this term if you see that this k2 tau1 if this k2 tau1 this is lesser than k1 so this term will become negative and because of this you will have inverse response this term becoming negative has a very important mathematical significance because it is negative so this term this term this k1 upon tau1 s plus 1 this term it is having a negative sign over here it dominates initially and because of this domination because of the fact that it is a bigger term stronger term we will have the whole overall response taking place in what we call it as inverse response so if this condition is satisfied only then you have inverse response otherwise you will not get inverse response so the condition is that k2 tau1 should be less than k1 it means that this term this term k2 tau1 minus k1 because this term is less this term will be negative and because this term is negative if i put the numerator is equal to 0 what we get the values of s we call it as zeros 
when the denominator is put equal to 0 what the value of s is we call it as poles so we are going to examine the poles of this particular transfer function and we see that when we do so our poles are positive we will have a positive poles because you see this pole it comes out to be minus k2 upon k2 tau 1 minus k1 and since this term is negative so this negative cancels with this negative and this gives us a positive zero so we conclude that for inverse response to happen for any transfer function all we have to do is we have to just observe the zeros if the zeros are positive in that case you will have inverse response so this is the way we identify the inverse response in any process in case the process is not just a linear process in case you have two processes which are opposing each other both are first order processes the overall response of this will again be uh, giving this kind of inverse response and we shall be dealing with these kind of inverse response processes in the subsequent sessions we will be seeing the mathematical way how to overcome these kind of responses as well so guys hope you have enjoyed the session in case you have any query you can contact me through the zoom sessions through the whatsapp or whatsoever means or we will be meeting face to face inshallah and we will be discussing over these things so thank you once again for watching this video patiently hope you stay safe and enjoy learning bye bye